Yeah. Bill Parkman? Here. Brennan Riley? Here. Brennan Riley? Here. Brennan Riley? Here. Brennan Riley? Here. He's excused. I'm here. Gregory Washington? Here. Lisa Chepe? Here. Dennis Schaffner? Here. Gerald Morris? Uh, he's excused. Absent. I guess we're going to call it that. Absent. You want to do a student absent? Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a couple of minutes. Have ever, has everyone looked over the agenda? Do I have a note? Do I have a, a note? <laughs> Do I have a motion for adopting the agenda? So moved. Any seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Meeting minutes. I have a correction. Okay, Dennis. <laughs> Under uh, number six, okay. it says Bill Parker was declared the winner by three votes. That's not right. It's one vote. Oh, it did end up being one vote. Okay. Okay, you two one, get past this one and one. Three. <laughs> okay, Julie. Pal. No, I voted three times. In this <laughs> Okay, with that correction, do I have a motion to adopt? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved with that one correction. Community <laughs> Leader Reports. Kern County Sheriff's Office. Wow, it's the first time I've done that one. Now that doesn't well. happen very often. No. It's raining. Yeah, it is. <laughs> California Highway Patrol. Oh, can I can I say something about yes. the sheriff? So on December twelfth I broke my leg and had to have the ambulance come out. The sheriff came out with them. And I just want to say how professional and it was a difficult situation and they were Great. <laughs> Don't hear that too often either. Good. They, very good. They had their coffee with, with a cop thing at the uh, cafe. Patty's Cafe. Yeah, that was, <coughs> that was fairly well attended. Yes, it was. It was a good opportunity. Okay. Back to the Highway Patrol. My turn, my turn. I'm Sergeant Claus with the California Highway Patrol out of the Mojave area, uh, representing Lieutenant Williams, who is uh, taking a uh, forced but well deserved vacation. He rarely takes time away from the office, but. <laughs> it took more than me to get that done. Um, let's see. Uh, I've got a couple stats for the month of December. Uh, in the Roseman community, our officers arrested uh, six people. The uh, majority of those were driving under the influence arrests. Uh, we responded to and handled four injury collisions. Uh, we responded to and handled nine non-injury collisions. And not counted in those is a separate five hit-and-run non-injury collisions. Um, we seem to be having a... I hate to call it a trend, but there's been at least two, if not three, in the last couple of months of auto versus pedestrian collisions. Uh, thankfully, the uh, drivers, I, I hate to say they did the right thing, but th they did the right thing and stuck around, which results in no charges for them if they're found not at fault. It, you, you always hear about on the news about you know somebody dying and now it's a felony. Well, because you left. I, I just, I mean, I hate to say what we should already know, but if something happens un unintended, it's an accident. Stick around, let us or the sheriffs, whoever's the handle it is, come take care of it, and you, you help yourself out by not leaving the scene. I mean, I, again, I feel kind of silly saying that, but it, it happens far too often, and I obviously feel the need to say it, so... Those five were here in Rosenbaum. Those five hit runs. Yes. What particular areas of town are those in? Because we're, we're studying uh, a few areas here in town where we think that 
we have the possibility of some problems. The, the majority of these are actually over here in the in the uh, city streets, town streets, okay. Sierra Highway, Diamond, in the in the downtown type area. Um, whether they're the fender benders or the injury collisions, that seems to be where the majority of them are transpiring. So it, it's probably the the increased traffic that we all know is over there for various reasons and. <laughs> yeah, the three areas that we're studying right now, one of them is at Gateway Apartments. The other is uh, right there at the high school, the Tropico, and that Tropico, excuse me, Eagle Way, Eagle Way? Rosamond okay. Boulevard, that crosswalk there. And then the other crosswalk is down by Tropico Middle School. Okay. Down there uh, at Mojave Tropico Road. Well, Those are some areas we're looking at because Lighting appears to be very poor at night. Right. Uh, and we think that it's going to call for some signalized crosswalks if we can convince the county to spend the money for them. That can't hurt. There's been a lot of accidents on uh, the overpass, too, in the last two or three weeks. I mean, it's just backed up traffic and it's actually horrible. So. The comment I made to you the other day, um, I'll say it now, when you get off of the freeway those little pilot things i get so mad because i'm in that lane turning and then cars turn with me and then they go over it they run over it. i'm like really what driving course did you take as far as your study goes if you do want to get very detailed information as far as exact location dates times you can call our office and, and that information should be uh, pretty accessible to you do you guys have a light meter by chance? No. A light meter? Mm -hmm. To measure ambient lighting and uh, from your, how much light you're getting from street lights and things of that nature. Oh, that's Caltrans. Yeah, Cal Caltrans or Cal I don't know if County Rose might have one, but. Yeah. I, did, I just thought maybe you guys had one for one of your gunning investigations. So. Are those in the evening or early morning? <laughs> Because if you ever been up there at the beginning of school at the end, oh my word. You just have to be patient to get out of there. I used okay. to sit in the office and wait for all the traffic. That's all I've got. I was, I was glad to see your uh, public information officer with the uh, cops, copies of the cop thing. Well, we, we do have a new uh, public information officer. <coughs> officer uh, Dotson has moved on to uh, other endeavors. So now Officer Maurer is our uh, public information officer. He's doing a phenomenal job. He's very, very personable, uh, very motivated, and uh, everything we've asked of him, he's been just 110% after it. So, and he's, he's very serious about these Coffee with the Cops and engaging the communities uh, at these events. So. Um, we I think we schedule them every quarter, so we'll be we'll be doing them as often as we can. Okay. Any questions? <coughs> okay. Current County Supervisor, Mike. Yes. Um, very brief report here. Um, David Couch is now the chairman of the board. He's uh, the uh, District 4 supervisor. Before that uh, was Mike Maggard, who was dis District 3. So that installation uh, ceremony took place when the board first came back uh, in uh, early January. Um, and the only other thing that I have is that the uh, board of supervisors did approve and hire uh, the three employees with the OEA grant. Uh, that are going to be working out of Ridgecrest, California City, and the Mojave Air and Spaceport. Um, they're going to start to come around to these meetings and chamber meetings and so forth in East Kern <coughs> County to uh, try and find ways to generate economic activity in East Kern. Um, and this is funded by, by the Department of Defense. So this is something that we've been working on for months now, and it's, it's uh, official, and these three gals are hired, and they're working, and uh, hopefully, we're going to see some some great results uh, from these three positions. Are they working in Mojave then, at the airport? One's at the Mojave Air and Spaceport. One is based in California City, and the third is based in Ridgecrest. Ah, okay. And that's all I have. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for Mike? Okay, moving on. Rosamond Community Watch. Uh, yes, um, our cleanup that was to have been this weekend is not going to happen due to the rain. The ditches are full of water and we don't want to have a safety hazard there. We're working on getting an illegal dump cleanup for either February or March. We're not sure yet. We have to get the permit. We've started identifying some areas around uh, one over here on 20th, uh, across from Matthew, Matthew Street. There's several mattresses and some carpet padding, and it looks like a construction company or someone may have decided to make that theirs. Um, we don't want to announce this on Facebook because people are going to start dumping things knowing <laughs> we're coming along to pick it up. But we will ask anyone if you see something, couches, mattresses, tires, appliances, give us um, an email, uh, call us, let us know the location. Because when we do the illegal dump cleanup, we have to identify the areas that we're going to be cleaning and uh, the county will give us a special permit for that. That's it. How do, how do people get in, get in touch with you? And I will give you my phone number, 661-418-1378. You can call, you can text. And we still have the website. I never go in there anymore. We're also on Facebook. You can find our, the Rosamond Community Cleanup Project. It's, we have our own Facebook page there. Either it's under, way. It's under Rosamond Community Watch. Rosamond Community Watch, we do have that, and there's also a special uh, page just for the community cleanup project. Either one, we'll answer either one. Okay, any questions? Okay. Rosamond Community Services District, Bray, you got the floor? Yes. Um, just uh, got some announcements uh, for the community. Uh, the RCSD uh, voted to uh, change their meeting dates and times. Uh, we are now effective uh, February 13th will be our first next meeting. Uh, we are going to be meeting at uh, on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. And uh, we will have our closed session start at 5.30. And uh, then we will go into regular session at 6 o'clock, and then any closed session items we couldn't finish in that half hour time, then we will go into after the regular meeting. That will get uh, staff, um, will get home a little earlier, and uh, the community can get home a little earlier as well. Um, the RCSD, we, uh, we've changed law firms. Um, we are now in the, we have an interim law firm that we've retained. Uh, we are in the process of uh, conducting a search for a permanent law firm, and our focus is going to be on uh, not only quality of represent, representation, but cost. We want to reduce our, our legal fees and costs and get those down. Uh, I can say one thing is that uh, our interim council that we have right now, uh, the cost of them attending our meetings was cut in half. Um, committees, I want to get the word out again. Um, Roseman News and Valley Press did a great job, but I'm going to state them again because what we would like is for people that want to participate in these ad hoc committees to contact uh, Ron Smith or Lizette Guerrero at the RCSD and, and give them your interest and then we can get you uh, dialed into this. Uh, we have a water and sewer committee, uh, water acquisition committee, uh, the uh, water reclamation committee, water banking committee, grants committee, and emergency preparedness committee. Um, I'm not going to go into reading all the uh, the uh, description of it, you can get that from the RCSD offices, or you can see me after the meeting, I'll be happy to. Um, tomorrow at 9 a.m., we're going to be having a budget workshop that's open to the public. Uh, it's going to be from 9 a.m. till approximately 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, we have three new board members on the board, and we're 
taking this budget that was adopted um, already by the previous board, but uh, we want to go over it line by line and we want to look at, uh, have a, a good, solid understanding of the budget, how they came up with these numbers, and uh, at the same time, uh, look for ways to identify where we can cut costs without uh, cutting quality of service. Uh, next Friday, same time, we're going to be having a capital improvement project workshop that's dealing only with the capital improvement expenditures that were on the 2018-19 budget. And again, we'll be looking at uh, the proposed capital improvement projects and to make sure that the money is being spent wisely and uh, we're getting the most bang for our buck. And that's all I had to report. I have a couple questions. One of them would be, uh, what are the possibilities of having a tour of our CSD facilities? That can be arranged. Um, yeah. I would say contact uh, the RCSD offices and um, see what they need to do to facilitate a tour, but uh, uh, public tours should not be an issue. Can we have cookies when we go? <laughs> What's that? Can we have cookies when we go? <laughs> oh, there's plenty of cookies out there. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, any other questions for Graham? Dennis? Okay. Uh, Rosamond Chamber of Commerce, Jack. Yep. Uh, just a couple items, actually. Um, obviously, we're getting close on the event center. <coughs> uh, wrapping up a couple of grants on it and uh, just getting in our final stages. Uh, we're going to have a uh, special board meeting to get with uh, Terry Lancito and herself, see what it's going to take to get that finished and, uh, and wrap that up. Um, we have a pit push for, um, got some brochures for uh, memberships, um, chamber membership. We also push them for brick pavers at the event center. At the front of the event center, we have bricks with uh, people's uh, or businesses' names uh, uh, lasered etched in to the bricks. So we're going to go ahead and lay all the bricks, but uh, <coughs> Anytime, we'll still be accepting new bricks. We just have to take them out and put in new bricks and, and reset them. I do, it's, um, I don't have any extras with me. I gotta make sure, I gotta keep this one, but there is a flyer for it. It will be online if it's not already. I thought it was, I've been told it wasn't, but uh, I'll find out when I get home. And, uh, so you can sign up for brick paper. Those various sizes, four by eight, 125, eight by eight, 250, eight by 12, brick 375, and 12 by 12 brick is 500. So uh, we've had a lot of people sign up for them, a lot of solar companies, and, uh, and that all goes towards uh, supporting the uh, our event center itself. I have a uh, new member to the uh, chamber, I'd like to welcome uh, Eric Anderson and his wife Pam for uh, Sweet Peas Catering. And uh, he's our new member, and uh, Dennis just signed up today. So thank you, Dennis, appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Uh, next week, uh, but we celebrated this week uh, with our chamber meeting is National School Choice Week. You can see uh, Gene there also has one on. And uh, so it's actually next week, uh, the 20th through the 26th, and it's to make awareness to uh, school choices, whether it be public schools, homeschooling, um, online schooling, vocational, whatever the case may be. And it's just to bring awareness to the various types of schooling that's out there. It's a national program. Uh, we had uh, everybody at the uh, chamber meeting get pictures and you send your pictures back, and then it's considered as an event. So uh, I was going to make you guys do it, but I ran out of scarves. So. <laughs> and then, uh, last but not least, um, um, Tuesday. What was the date on Tuesday? Uh, <coughs> 
believe it was 15. <coughs> 15. Anyhow, we had the uh, Roseman Urgent, Urgent Care open house and ribbon cutting. Uh, Mike was there. Um, I think I saw Dennis there. I was there. You were there. <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, it opens up Monday for business. Uh, Martin, uh, I can't remember Martin's last name, but he's he's uh, in charge of the whole facility. You remember Martin's last name? I don't recall. We have it. Anyhow, they have a great staff there. They have a great facility. It was a nice walk through, um, and uh, they have X-ray machines. They'll do uh, non-emergency uh, care. But of course, you know, if you if you're not sure, you can go there and get evaluated, and then of course they can make a decision I don't think there. They have the X-ray machines. Um, no, they do not. They're they're, they're, yeah, they're waiting for it to be permitted and so forth. Yeah. But uh, that'd be a big plus, a big, big plus for CHP too, because now you have a place to uh, drop people off and have them evaluated. Uh, right. You know, it's, it's like last month, uh, Lieutenant Williams was talking about me and uh, Albert had an uh, uh, elderly gentleman from the uh, um, Roseman Hills there that was having uh, heat stroke symptoms. Okay. So we brought him in, and I called uh, Lieutenant, and he came over. And he spent, you know, another couple of hours with him, making sure he's okay before they left. And Versus, had urgent care been open, then you guys could actually just drop them off there, let them evaluate and make the calls. And the right, stuff, right. You know. So it's it's a good thing. It's a long time uh, that we've needed an urgent care. I guess the only thing uh, would be nice to have now would be a bank, but uh, I'm not holding my breath on that one in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on my prayer list. That's how, That's how it gets there done. You know. <laughs> um, they did not give information on the hours. Uh, all I know is they're going to be open Monday. I don't think I heard any hours. The hours are 8 to 8, yeah, eight, to eight. eight to Monday eight. through Friday, and 9 to 3, on Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. And That's Sunday. Good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So there you have it. So uh, that's all I have. Any questions? Your car had a flyer. <laughs> all right. Thanks, my report. Sutton and Unified School District. All right. Um, we have three new board members on the, the school trustee board. Um, they, the other two people, and I, I think are highly qualified and uh, interested in um, doing, you know, serving the community and um, helping get us out of the fix that we're in. Um, we had a training that uh, explained to us the Brown Act, which tells um, what we can and cannot do, who we can meet with, how, what we can discuss and what we can't discuss. So we had a training about our positions um, that went, went on and that was informative. Um, and we are dealing with a number of issues, mostly uh, cutting millions of dollars from the budget because um, previous administration overspent. So um, some hard choices that are going to have to be made. Um, but we're going to try to, and we have the county telling us kind of what we can and cannot do. So it isn't like we can just do whatever we want. The county's telling us, no, you can't have that item. And uh, yes, you must do this thing. Um, so the three new members and the two that are returning, it's a good board. I think you're going to see a lot of, of good decisions, but you know, when you're making hard decisions, not everybody's going to be pleased. It's just that way. So we're going to do the best we can, uh, keeping in mind that the most important thing is the education of the children. It's, it's not about how adults feel. It's about whether kids get educated. So um, that's 
Let's find out. Thank you. And the Valley Citizens for Responsible Use of Water. I actually re reminded them today, I was called the office and they uh, the guy who took my place when I retired has resigned civil service. So they're in, they're in between people. They'll be able to be before they get some news. Uh, KEDC, Kern Economic Development Corporation, <clears throat> had a meeting last Thursday in Ridgecrest and introduced the economic development officers, three of them, and their interview is up on our YouTube so you can log in and measure them. Uh, and as Mike said, they are empowered to bring good things to happen. Now they have, the, the lady that has our area has two incorporated cities and then a bunch of unincorporated communities. So she's a little skeptical about that. So be nice to her, <laughs> talk to her, uh, welcome her, and then maybe she'll realize where Roseman is. She, uh, she's tied to the base and lives in Cal City. And then the other thing is, Danny Bazell made the announcement that the Air Force Test Museum has actually broken ground. The earth movers are out there moving dirt. And by the end of next summer, they expect to have 60,000 square foot hangar opened up and they're predicting a lot of traffic through Rosemont to get there. Uh, they said 150,000 visitors is what they're projecting. So that's, that's coming up. Is this on the base? It is on the base. It's right outside the gate, so you can go in without having a pass. All right, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's a big, big project and uh, they have money to pay for it and get it started and they're going to put another 60,000 square feet as an add-on to it. But it started. We, we've been planning it. I've been going to meetings for years where they're talking about it, but now they're started. They technically broke ground in uh, the spring, right? but then there were some delays. So yeah, right. it took them a while to get past those hurdles, and now they're, they're on their way. Mm -hmm. If you want to drive up and see it, it's not a problem. You just head down to Roseland Boulevard. It's eight and a half miles. Yeah. And uh, it'll be on the right where the display of airplanes are. It'll be down below that, actually. I would caution anybody that drives on the base uh, that the security forces folks are really intense on catching speeders. So don't do it. You know, it, it, the speed limit is what, 60 miles an hour? Long. On the base, I think it's 55. No, on that stretch, it's like 60. 65 in the other area. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, and if it says 65, I wouldn't have any problem doing 67, but I would think twice about doing 68. And they give you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right? They're very uh, serious about that. So, if you want to go down and check it out, you can go down and visit those airplanes anytime you want, really, that are there on display now. But uh, once they open it, and that was why we had them here speaking, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. well, yeah. They're going to have uh, a, a, a huge education component with that. Yeah. Which will work out nicely for our students here. Yeah, the, the high school has an avionics program that Working with the base, yeah, that actually sp sprang from uh, Miguel, who started that, was one of our honorary commanders. What, one of my responsibilities was running the honorary commander program, and I made sure that they were included so that we could have that two-way communication. <clears throat> Very important to me personally. Well, and I heard a comment the other day, I don't even remember who said it, but probably at the open house, somebody said businesses, when they're looking to uh, come into a new area, if there's not a clinic, 
they won't even consider it. So having a clinic will encourage businesses to come to Rosemont. Okay. We're supposed to have a guest speaker. Tonight. Yeah, he's here. He is here. Yeah. He's uh, clearly hit. He's the guy with the crash helmet hairdo in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dennis, for being my straight man. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'll get back at you. So many years of politics. Yeah, yeah, let's so. get back to the last time. So, I'm going to go ahead and, if I may, uh, pass out these brochures. Um, we're real excited about the fact, and, and thank you to Dennis for the invite, and Mr. Chairman, thank you for allowing me just a couple of minutes. But uh, one of the things that uh, we've been working on at Antelope Valley Transit Authority, I guess I should introduce myself, it's on the agenda, but I'm Norm Hickling, I'm the uh, Director of Strategic Planning and Development for Antelope Valley Transit Authority. Uh, and a couple of years ago, we had started having conversations with General David Smith out at the air base and, and talking about what some of their needs were from a transportation standpoint. And they really made it very, very clear they needed a regular bus schedule coming into the town. One, Rosemont, going into Palmdale, going into Lancaster, etc. And it literally has taken two years to just continue to, to work through different things, as you can imagine, having a 40-foot bus coming through the West Gate. Um, we, everybody was a little um, uh, concerned about how we were going to handle the security on that. But the security team out there at, at Edwards, to, to their credit, and to the leadership out there at Edwards, um, their total focus was on the airmen. And, and those young men and women who are out there serving our country, they said, we're going to do, we're going to find ways to make this work. And they have. So we're getting passes, and we're getting security clearances for our operators. Um, we already have a lane set up for where the buses are going to go. And so it's, uh, we start on Tuesday morning. We, we have <laughs> planned on Monday. Uh, but then we realized in our uh, exuberance that it's Martin Luther King holiday. And so, uh, so I want to make sure I didn't pass everybody. I apologize for it. Uh, at 515, the very first bus is going to leave from Palmdale Transportation Center. Uh, it will then go to the north parking lot there at the Metrolink station in Lancaster and pick up. And then it will come up to the bus stop up here on Rosemont Boulevard and Eagle Way. And it will stop there uh, right at 5.53, according to our schedule. And then from there, it will get back on Rosemont Boulevard and go right into the base. And so the one requirement, and you're going to hear this announcement on the bus, if should you take it, is that you've got to have the proper credentials uh, in order to get through the base. Because what's going to, the way the protocol is going to be is the bus will stop in that far right-hand lane. Uh, young airmen will put the rifle. Uh, we'll board the bus and make sure everybody's got the proper passes to be on the base. If you have it, it's fine. The bus is going to go on. If you don't, then you're going to be asked to well, wait in the visitor center until you can verify your, your credentials, etc. Uh, yes, ma'am. Question. Uh, I'm going to get my new driver's license tomorrow. Yay! So I'll be getting that, the new, you know, federal ID uh -huh. thing. Does that get you on the base? No. You have that? No. You have to have a... You have to have a, a clearance to where has, you have to go through a process to do that. And you have to have a reason for, for going out there. Yeah. So. People who work on the base have a common access card yeah. that they scan. <coughs> so you have to have that. I've got to use mine like three times now. My boss hasn't used his. He's really upset. But hey, I keep driving out there. So, uh, but, so we're real excited about that. Then the next bus, I haven't memorized. Then there's actually going to be two runs in the morning and two runs in the in the afternoon. But the next bus then leaves uh, again Palmdale Transportation Center at 6:15. So 5:15 and 6:15, and then everything is just about an hour different. So at 6:53, we'll be here at the Rosamond stop here by Albertsons uh, on Eagle Way. We'll get to the front gate at about 6:09 for the first run, 7:09, and you can see the times. And what we've tried to do, and we've actually provided a map here. As you go into the base, we're looking at, we're, we're knowing that most folks that are going to be coming from a Palmdale, a Lancaster, a Rosamond are going there to work. So it's going to go by all the major employment centers. So each of the hangars, you can see we've, we've identified those, we've worked with the folks at Edwards. Uh, new signs are now up where the bus stops are going to be. 
Uh, it's going to run through so a couple of the parking lots that we can actually operate in and stop at each of the main uh, employment centers all the way to NASA. Then it's going to start coming back. <coughs> when it comes back, it's going to go through the residential area because we know based on our feedback from surveys, etc., and from the leadership team out there that there's a lot of family members that will either have kids that want to come in and go shopping. they got to bring them in for um, you know, doctor's appointments, uh, school, etc. And so we want to be able to pick them up and then they'll come right back out, Rosamond, come out here, pick up anybody at the Eagle Way, Rosamond, Albertson stop there, and then come back to Sierra Highway and then take them down to Lancaster Metrolink Station and then ultimately down to Palmdale Transportation Center. Now, the nice thing about it, somebody wants to buy a monthly pass, which right now we have it set at $175. Um, and we, we figure that's a pretty good bargain when you figure that's about 22, well, that's 22 days, so 44 trips, uh, if I do my math right. And so it's gonna save you a lot of gas. Uh, we talked about economic <coughs> development here just a little bit. We talked about traffic safety. We're hoping, and that's what the leadership at Edwards is really hoping, that they are going to be able to uh, reduce the congestion at the West Gate going in there in the morning and the congestion coming out, uh, have less traffic accidents, have less people speeding. Uh, <laughs> even though these are brand new buses, these are all 100% battery electric, so they're going to be doing a great job and not having any kind of... Uh, uh, emissions or anything of that sort to be <coughs> with our greenhouse gas reduction. Yeah, 100% electric? 100% electric. Wow. Yes, sir. So that's uh, a current event. <coughs> uh, brand new buses, too. These are. I thought you said gas electric. Uh, zero battery electric. Are these the BYD buses? They're the BYD buses. Yes, sir. No so, gasoline at all. No, no gasoline. No, no. No, no diesel. Nothing. Is there a website where we can look at that bus? Uh, well, there's a picture of it. Well, I'm curious about the specs on the bus. Is there a website where you can look it up? Yeah, you can go to BYD if you want to, but you can look at our website, avta.com. Thank you. You're welcome. So The school district is getting some electric buses also. Oh, perfect. Fantastic. So um, they're, they're nice. Uh, they're quiet. They're very comfortable. Uh, if you'd like to work on while you're on the bus, uh, all the buses are going to have re uh, free Wi-Fi uh, so that, you know, you don't finish up all your emails leaving the office get on the bus you can still work through a couple of emails and your boss thinks you're still there which is kind of nice so uh, geez. <laughs> I'm gonna send Dennis an email <laughs> Dennis I'm on the bus where are you uh, so we're, we're really excited about it again we're gonna do the first two weeks free uh, we're not gonna start charging patrons uh, until February 1 and the reason why is because we know this is a brand new route. We want to make sure everything's good. We want to make sure it's the proper and the best customer service that we can um, possibly provide. So we chose to use the next couple of weeks as just a marketing uh, opportunity for us and get people used to it. And uh, so that's so where we're So it's the at. same price no matter which stop you go to? It's the same price no matter which stop. But now, if you, you, if you see here the monthly price, now reduced fare price, that is for somebody, for seniors. Seniors are 62 and older, uh, which I'm almost there. Uh, Dennis is well past. Um, <laughs> see, I told you. I've known you for a long time. So. And anybody that has a disability that can come in, you can buy a pass, and that monthly pass then is $87.50. Uh, a 10 trip, say like you're coming out here and you're working at the base, but you're not going to be here for an entire month, but you need to be, say, for the next couple of weeks, you can buy a 10-trip pass. And what that is, for one week, you could uh, buy that pass. It's a trip in and a trip, trip out. That's two trips, obviously, and that's $45. And then the reduced fare is $22. And then the single trip, you can ride in for 5 bucks. And uh, again, it's half price um, if you're a senior and or, and or disabled. So. Um, we're trying to make it as fair as we possibly can to everybody. The nice thing about it, you buy the pass. If you need to go into town, you can go into Palmdale, Lancaster. You can get on any of the buses that run in town mm. already, and it doesn't charge you anymore. That pass will get you anywhere you want to go. So, mm. uh, in fact, is if you buy the pass, you come out of Edwards, you can go down to Palmdale or Lancaster, 
you can get on our commuter buses and pay just a small what they call an upcharge and you get on our commuter buses and that'll get you all the way down to Union Station if that's where you need to go. So uh, very affordable. Uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. <coughs> uh, I got some more brochures too on the local service but I also have some brochures on the um, travel training and that's one thing that we want to offer I hear there's from the school district um, obviously we could come back out here as a community and do some travel training on how to take the bus how to utilize the bus and, and hopefully make your life uh, a little quality of life and not having to drive uh, a little bit better so can you leave me a hand before we put up in the chamber I'll give you everything I got sir sure absolutely love be you. So, in that. Uh, and, and I, I'll, I I'll give you my I'm sorry I was a long time employee at Edwards Air Force Base and I love the bus which I took in the 19, early 80s, and uh, you get to sleep on the way out, and you get to sleep on the way back. If yes. you want Show to. off. Oh, it was wonderful. <laughs> and then they just quit. The ridership, the ridership got reduced, and then people started switching to those vans. Yeah. Had somebody pick you up in the morning. So I know there's probably a lot of people looking forward to that. We, we've had a lot of excitement, and, and out there a lot of nice, positive comments. Uh, this is just the initial start. Uh, I know, and again, this is really, a, 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 in talking with the General uh, General Tiger out there, a, a true testament to how the leadership has taken care of their, their and, and, and the care they have for them. They really want us to expand this service right away. And we're like, okay, we're going to do two runs in the morning, we'll do two runs at night uh, in the afternoon and, and get folks home. <coughs> the demands there, ultimately, we see this going into later in the evening and maybe two or three more runs during the day. Um, even Dennis and I talked the other day, one of the drawbacks is, hey, I'm taking the bus in, I get to my place of employment, I need to go over to the commissary, how do I get there? And so even today though, we started talking about the fact that we wanna run a circulator on the base and just a bus that stays in the base, hits all these spots, but maybe you know, one for the employment center and one for the residential center and then come into a common hub so somebody needs to transfer, et cetera. And, and so we're trying to think of all kinds of ways to make it much more convenient. That young airman, he or she that comes in, they get stationed at Edwards. They wanna go have a nice dinner, have an adult beverage down in Rosamond. They wanna go down to Lancaster or what, wherever they wanna go. We don't need them driving back and becoming one of their DUI statistics. And, and that's one of the things that they really hit home with us. So uh, we're trying to think of just funding. Well, people people with children, um, they have to buy no, a seat for they're 44 time. inches or lower. They go pretty. So. <laughs> now, we already know that there was like one lady who has like three children, and she says, you know, I'm going to be bringing them in, and the kids are free. So. And, and we're not going to charge somebody. If they're on base and they need to ride the bus over to like the residential area, Okay, fine. So we're gonna. Are you guys actually? It's great. It's really cool. Right. Are you actually stopping at the CDC at the center, uh, the Center? Children. I think so. I think so. I believe so. Let me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's right along in this. It's really close. If, if not right at the center, yeah. we're we're real close. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to take and put this on our Facebook page. Please well. do give it promotion and stuff to help. Okay, so. and, and our numbers are on there. Uh, I can give you my business card. Anybody wants my business card for my direct line? Obviously, all kidding aside, get Absolutely, you can have them all. <laughs> so, paid for by the taxpayer. I have so a Bible have study of service people. And that's the thing, if you have groups, we, you know, if you have groups, the Chamber of Commerce, we can come out and do travel training. If you, you know, the school, because we know that the, I'm talking to Dr. Smith, and I'm taking too much time, and I apologize for, but uh, I'm an old politician, so if you can't start it, it's just, uh, but like, you're, you're talking about the school, and, and they want to do STEM education out there on the base, and the, the question is, how do we afford, how do we get kids into the base? Well, you buy them a 10 ride pass, and we'll figure out some way that either the school district, and we can find <coughs> them on the bus and get them in there. And, and while we're not a school transportation agency, we're part of the public transit system, so we can get a pass and get the kids on and, and get them into the base and they get a better education or exposed to a better education. So, any other questions? I, I appreciate your time and looking forward to success. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any community announcements? Public comment.
comment period. assign uh, new people to the various committees and stuff. How are we going to do that with printing? Or do we get to put him wherever we want him? <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll leave a couple of them open. That way we can make sure. But I, the, uh, I think probably, I'll put it this way, I think he needs to be on the planning committee. I think the vice chair needs to be there. Now, safety committee, we still have Dennis under. Do you want to stay there, Dennis? Yes. Okay. Good place for Dennis to be safe. <laughs> okay. Any other parties want to be on the safety committee? Yeah, I'd like to get involved in the safety committee. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for Ray. Anyone else? I can go. Okay, Public Health and Community Welfare Committee. Do you, do you wish to remain on there, Don? Sure. Okay. Uh, any volunteers for that? I'll volunteer for that. Yeah, and I want to. Public Works Committee. You want to stay there? Yes. I just figured we need to ask you. Okay, that was good. I I'll work with you on that. We can put Washington and Brennan on there. Right. But that's just my thought. Once again, we'll tell, we'll tell uh, <laughs> Brennan <laughs> He's that you've been informed. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get for not showing up. <laughs> okay, Public Relations Committee. Dennis Schottner and Donna Morris are both still Do you wish to uh, remain on there? Okay. How about you, Dennis? Oh, Dennis behaves himself. <laughs> we are talking about Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? How about I'll you, Lisa? I will do it. Okay. I was going to say, I just want to give Greg here a chance. <laughs> nah. All righty. And we have a new committee here that uh, we don't have anyone currently staffed on, but I do want. Uh, to have some folks that can kind of keep track of what's going on in the state legislature as it affects the county as well as how it affects the unincorporated areas of Kern County <coughs> as well as the cities of Kern County and to be able to kind of keep us posted on what's happening in that regard. So I will volunteer to be one of the members of that. <laughs> what if we stuck kind of, I mean, what if we, uh, Lisa wants to be on the radio. I'll go there with you. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll jump. Whoever's on that committee, you should uh, sign up to get information from Shannon Bell because she puts out a lot of pertinent information about things that are going on. Mm -hmm. Well, that's some of the things that we want to do. We want to try to get information flow going better because uh, with me being a retiree, I get to spend probably a little bit too much time on eye on Rosamond. Show off. And I see some things there that, that really show that there's a lot of ignorance in the community okay. as far as what's going on, what's available, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And I want to see us improve the information flow in that regard. Good idea. Okay. 
Mr. Chairman, does any of these committees have any affiliation with Parks and Recreation? Um, <laughs> well, I would think that the uh, Community Welfare Committee should probably pull that in. Mm -hmm. Public Relations Committee? No. Community Welfare Committee. C. C. Where is that? Oh, C. Public Health. Oh, okay. <coughs> Public Public Community Community okay, that's what threw me off there. Yeah. Uh, that would be item C. Uh, you want that one? I will go off and turn it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good thing I have your razor. Business. The only old business that the council currently has is we're investigating uh, a possible alternative route for the east side of Rosamond in the event we have uh, train breakdowns, signal light breakdowns, things of that nature. And it's quite funny that you didn't hear anything about this for the longest while. I mean, every once in a while we, we've all come across a train parked across the tracks and stuff like that. But in the period of time shortly after Dennis and I started working on that, I've already got in my log 15 incidents dealing with that track. Well, quit uh, paying them. <laughs> a lot of them are, are uh, signal problems. And only a couple of them are train problems, or, or I should say, uh, train control related problems. Uh, so we're looking at that because one of the things that we have a concern about with that is if that street is blocked out there, how does an emergency vehicle get over to that side of town to be able to render aid? Uh, I talked with both the sheriff and the fire department, and they both said, don't worry about it, we got it covered. And I said, okay, that's fine, but I can't picture these guys taking and tearing out across a field or anything like that in a fire truck that's uh, relatively new. But uh, we're looking at that, trying to figure out ways that we can get that done at the best economy for the county. We're not looking for an asphalt road, we're looking basically for a gravel road that goes from Rosamond Boulevard along 10th Street West down to Patterson Road and then connects with that road there at the uh, Water Recycling Center, I believe it is, or Water Reclamation. Yeah, at Patterson. At Patterson, and then comes up to Sierra Highway. Uh, the data collection part of it is taking us quite a bit of time. But it is something on our agenda to work on over the uh, course of the year. Well, my truck is not a four-wheel drive, but I think at this point, we've got rain. We need to drive that road. I've got a four-wheel drive truck, a car, but I think we need to drive. You don't want to drive that road in the rain right now, I guarantee you. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. We need to know where are we going to get the stop. Yeah. It's terrible when it's totally dry and 110 degrees out there. True. So. Yeah, Greg like and my road. drove that <laughs> road, and uh, a couple of my molars are still loose. Boy, it'll just it'll it'll it'll, it'll jar you. And, but in talking with the roads folks, we don't necessarily have the right of way, all the easement along that Be between Patterson and Orange, really. because Orange is paved. You, you take Orange uh, pavement to to 15th and then up. So the big issue is from Orange to Patterson, about a mile and a half, and it's it's rough. So uh, I'm sure it's going to take us a, a while to have that come to fruition. But uh, it's it seems so simple when when we talk about it, but when the when the push comes to shove, it's very complex. You have to you have to contact everyone who owns that property and get them to agree to assign their easement yep. and it, it's a long process. It's a long process. <laughs> well, it, it, it gets priced out of our, our ability to do anything with if the easement is not already there. 
uh, because just as soon as you start talking about putting a road in, someone's going to say, oh, now my property is going up in value, and they're going to want to raise the price. So if the easements are not already in place, it'll, it'll be expensive to get them into place. Okay. So at this uh, point, we're not writing a letter because we don't even know no. what we're doing. No, we're, we're still <clears throat> fact finding. One step at a time. Okay. So we took any other old business that I failed to, to capture? I don't believe that uh, there was anything else that was hanging up. On these committees that you're putting your folks on, um, does one of them cover? Um, the overall streets in Rosemont? That's covered under public works. Okay. D. D. The uh, roads department falls under public works now. Are you guys working on what's going to happen with the roads all over Rosemont? They are deteriorating so rapidly because of all the traffic. If you go down Rosemont Boulevard to Eagle Way and out to Tropico, you can see all the stuff that's deteriorating. Because of all the traffic trying to get on the freeway that plays in the morning, that it's been suggested that we have an off ramp, an on ramp on on uh, 30th Street towards Avenue A somewhere, because it, it really is. Our roads are really deteriorating, really badly. Well, you know when somebody... look at Sierra Highway just right by uh, Rosen Boulevard, those trucks are just chewing up that highway there, and our roads department is doing a great job of patching them, but they are just giving way. Something terrible. Well, you know we need a long range plan on how we're going to resurface these roads and roads. Well, when somebody comes from Lancaster to my house and they ask me where Avenue A is, and I tell them, well, when you no longer see any road markers, then you're at Avenue A. No, the bots are dots. So yeah. I, I would actually like whatever committee that is on to start looking at that. It is seriously getting an issue. Actually, they have been. Uh, we, one of the things that was done in this past year was we got uh, problem areas on 35th Street West taken care of. Because there was uh, quite a bit of uh, work being done down there by developers in various areas, but there was uh, large expanses of street there that were not being taken care of by anyone. And so we mentioned that, and, and Roads Department did come out and take care of that problem. It's quite muddy and green on that street right there, too. I drove it this morning. And then they did another street, too, right, Mike? Not too long ago? Oh. Yeah, I don't have the report in front of me, I believe, so a couple months ago. A couple months ago, they did a pretty good stretch on a side street way up. Well, you know, they need to do lots of that uh, on Northern Boulevard, all the time, and some other places, too. It's, it's pretty pretty. Yeah. Well, that's one of, one of the things that the, com the community could help us with. Uh, yes, you have seven board members, but uh, some of them still work Monday through Friday. Uh, so if, if you know of areas in town that are in bad shape, let one of us know, and we'll put it on the list and get it addressed. Up, no problem. <laughs> You've got colored pencils, too. Yeah, I'll color them in. Next Which ones are bad. Right. A little bit crunchy. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> Big hot ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks in the water pond. <laughs> <laughs> okay, going back to this next item, 11, I mean 12B, attendee representation to local and county organization meetings. I've handed out to the various uh, board members here this morning, for me this afternoon, <clears throat> uh, a listing of what comes from the county website, and that's only roughly half of the boards and committees that meet in any given month here in this county. There's a lot of other ones. Uh, but what we're going to do is try to go through and, and pick out the ones that are most pertinent to Rosamond and try to have someone attend it who can come back and fill the community in on uh, items that would be of importance to us. Uh, I know, for example, like in my case, I'm very curious about the status of cannabis in California City. I'd like to know, I know that they were talking about having grow houses and stuff like that up there, so I'm curious as to what's happening with that. But 
I've given this list to them. I'm not asking them to volunteer today or anything on there, but take a look and see what you are interested in. And next month we'll uh, divvy them up. Okay, administration and office space, files and equipment. Again, this is not something we're going to make a, any kind of a motion on to tonight or anything. But I want to ask the council to take a look at the way we do business. Uh, one of the things that I believe we are sorely in need of is we need a building of our own. Not necessarily for our meetings, but to deal with our committees and things of that nature. An administrative <coughs> space where the mail can go and, and it can be you know, copies made and put aside for people that are on these committees and stuff like that. Um, it, it, as it stands right now, we're kind of, uh, almost kind of ad hoc, we're doing it out of our back pocket. And I don't know if we're giving Supervisor Scrivener the full level of support that he needs to have from us. So, we're going to be talking about it, trying to identify places that, I know that, for example, Greg, RCSD has a building on Diamond Street. And I'm curious to, as to what its function is, what it's used for currently. Uh, if there's a possibility it can be used for other things. Uh, right now, um, that building, as far as I know, is not being used for anything at this time. And, um, but at our last meeting, the Historical Society approached the RCSD board about utilizing that space for the Historical Society. And uh, we've asked the general manager to put that on the agenda for next month in February so we can at least open up a dialogue and talk about it and see where it goes from there. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in if it can be of use to the community, then let, let's explore whatever option we can that's going to benefit the community. Okay. I, I don't know if ownership plays anything into this, but I'm curious, does RCSD own the building or does the county own the building? We own the building. Okay. And um, I honestly don't really know the history. I'd have to get back to you on that. But uh, RCSD has ownership of that building. Okay. I know that it used to be, the library used to be there once yes. upon a time. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> but that would be something that we should look at. If, and try to identify maybe that there's a couple other places. I, I'm also curious about the search and rescue building over here. Uh, I know that it probably is a portion of it that needs to be kept strictly for the storage of uh, their gear and stuff like that. And I certainly don't want to, you know, interfere with that part of it. But I'm curious as, a, as to whether there's any office space available there. Uh, obviously, that is county owned, or I guess uh, maybe that the sheriff owns that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a sheriff. Yeah. And keep in mind, we have to come down. Yeah. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, Juan's there. I just want to make sure I was thinking of the right thing. Keep in mind, we have two mystery uh, file cabinets of your guys' at the chamber. I'm, I'm trying to find a place to move, Jack. How about the Roseman News Building on Fair Highway and Roseman Boulevard? It's always vacant. <laughs> Nobody ever uses it. Oh, really? The whole thing is in transition. The whole property is in transition. So be alert within the next month or two, you're going to see some big changes. Uh, well, it's going to have cameras that, up on the roofs and everything that going on. The <laughs> is that by Keith and Ford? Yeah, yeah, it's a building in the middle of the, the parking lot there. Keith. Oh, what's that in the center? I don't really understand what in transition means. Means ask me later, I think. <laughs> Ruben said that uh, Rick wants to close it. Mm -hmm. We heard it's up for sale. That's yeah, he said yeah it's up for sale. So 
this one will be closed and then Mohave and the, comes directly thereafter. Uh huh. Yeah, it's on the market for six twenty-five. Oh, he's selling the business. Yep. Well, he's selling that lot. No, he's selling the this property and wow. moving everything to Mojave. Oh wow. And then Mojave will be closing oh. shortly after. Not the Rosebud News Park, the the Ford dealership. It's a whole new property. Your mind jumps ahead. Yes. <laughs> he's. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> Wait. Rick is seventy. Rick is seventy-one, and 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 he says he's seventy-one, and he thinks he should retire. So that's what he kind of is looking forward to do. So it might be available if you've got if Zach can come up with six twenty-five, he can have the whole. I think it's probably a little out of our budget. I got twenty-five cents if somebody's got six dollars. <laughs> But anyway, that's something that we as a council need to talk about. I also want to figure out what we need in the way of um, equipment, things of that nature. I don't know if we need an office telephone per se, but maybe that's part of what we should have. Well, we uh, advertise a phone number here. Yeah, that's a new phone number this month. That's to a secondary phone at my house. Oh. So you closed the bookie business? And <laughs> The computer repair business. Bat phone. It's in the bat room. Okay, uh, moving on. Okay, agenda referrals. I wasn't sure where to put this, but we need to get our contact information to that guy so that we can get business cards done up for everybody. That's true. Just email me. Hmm? They'll just email me. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get, I'll get that to pulled together. Yeah. <coughs> email uh, addresses for all the uh, board members. I uh, just need. There's a few other things I'll need to get. Maybe maybe a phone number if I don't have one for me. Okay, I need to change phone. Point is, you need to think about what you want to have on your car and get that to Bill, so that he can get it to that. Guy. <laughs> so we can get cards in. It's important to have the business cards. I, I tell you, it makes a lot of difference when you walk into to a business here in town and, you're, and you want to talk with them about things. And most folks are busy; they don't want to take the time. But if, if they find out that you're with the RMAC, they they'll stop and make a couple of minutes and. Maybe give you a piece of their mind, maybe make a suggestion, uh, but it's something good to have. So. All righty. Bill, you know, in the past, uh, over many years, we carried stories about individuals that the RMAC would recognize. Uh, outstanding teacher, outstanding uh, coach, uh, s some charity in town that did extraordinary business. I can remember so many different people getting recognition and encouragement for what they were doing in town. That's okay, John. I don't need any. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we could think about that again. Okay. okay. I have nothing for the uh, agenda for next month. How about you, Don? Um, I don't know that I have a something for the agenda. I do have, though, there's the, the owner of the tire store in Lancaster that owns the tire store here in Rosemont mm -hmm. wants uh, the powers that be. And I was looking to see which one he would fit under, but he wants someone to contact him. He's having an issue with something, and I didn't have a card. <laughs> so... He has my number, but he wants us to contact him. So if somebody wants to go with me on a date, then uh, is he he's not the, he's he's not down here anymore, though. He's he's down at the store in Lancaster. The owner's in Lancaster, but it's regarding the store here in Rosemont. Yeah, there might be a place for you there. Yeah, I'll 
I think that's part of the issue. That's why I didn't really want to bring that well, little spot up. I see the little he, shack, he but we would that. need a little bit more than the shack. He owns that, but there's that middle, there's the, it used to be a pea store, and then there's a photography place. Mm -hmm. It's usable space in both those places. So maybe something I think somebody there. just moved in there, didn't they? There's I a, don't a know, auto something or other in the one spot. I just spot. want to talk, because that might be just the right amount of space. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Uh, let's go ahead and move into director's comments. Do you have any comments, to Dennis? And I, something came up just now when I got that sidetracked. This, this. Oh, she brought up Brown Act. Mm -hmm. We probably need to get the uh, uh, Kern County Council over to do Brown Act training for us. And each member needs to go. We have ethics training also to do. Yeah, yeah. AB 1234, Assembly Bill 1234. If you look that up, there's training on conflict of interest. You know, isn't that what it's called? You know what that's called, Greg? That AB 1234, how to be on a board and not get in trouble? Uh, that's. Isn't that. No, that's is actually that possible? the California Brown Act. Is that part of the Brown Act? But we can still have the Brown you know, and do that. We've done By that before. knowing what the laws are, it is a safety issue for for you. It protects you when you know what you should and should not do. Right. So it, it's a good protection. I think of it as a safety net. There are three things that you're required to do as an elected member. And you're not required to take Brown Act classes. That's just smart. Uh, things yeah. to do. You know, get yourself educated so you're not in violation. But the two things that you are required to take by state law is ethics training and sexual harassment training. Yeah. Okay. Donna, do you have anything? Lisa? I do not. Greg? No, I don't. I make a motion we adjourn. That's it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned at 822.